Do you find that you use certain tools during certain parts of the year? Does your woodworking have seasons? Welcome to the small wood shop. You gotta put tools away, you gotta pull them out and set them up. Maybe it follows the seasons. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. This is episode number 64. I'm calling it lathe season. Yes, folks, I have a small woodworking shop. In order to get things done, I've got to move something aside and set something else up. And just kind of naturally and having to put away my lathe or pull it out and set it up, I find that I only use certain tools during certain times of the year. And as we get into fall and the leaves start to change and football comes on and the damn Colorado Buffaloes keep losing, I end up going into the shop and taking out some aggressions on my lathe. It's the season when I start turning towards holiday gifts and making pins and things for business customers throughout the year. So I'll set up my lathe, usually get a nice dedicated uh, section of the shop for it, and I'll leave it there probably for the last three to four, or last three months of the year, and certainly a couple months of the new year. So with that in mind, I wanted to put out a short little episode because I'm going to be heading to the Woodworking in America Hand Tools and Techniques Conference here this weekend up in Valley Forge. And instead of getting started on another sequence of podcasts and then getting it interrupted because of Woodworking in America coverage, I thought I'd put out a short video here or a short podcast that talks kind of about some of my plans for the rest of the year. And with lathe season upon us, I had sent out some emails to uh, a lot of regular commenters on the blog. I also sent out some tweets um, about what do you guys want to see with my lathe? What other projects do you want to see? And I got some great feedback. So coming up for the majority of the rest of the year, I do have some other projects to put out. But as far as lathe projects, I have never done a bowl tutorial before. So I think I'll turn a bowl on the show. I'd like to turn a small lidded box, kind of a Richard Raffin style box. I also have wanted to turn a hollow form vessel for some time. Never done it before, so I'll bring you guys along on that experiment and pull out some of my great turning stock and see if I can't make a vase or something like that. Now, have no fear for those of you out there who aren't turners. I have plenty of other video to put out. I have lots and lots of Rubo video to get edited. Um, many of you know I got a new iMac computer and I've got some great editing software that I'm trying to learn how to use. So I'm going to be playing with that with my Rubo footage and trying to put together some more professional looking podcasts to cover the Rubo. Um, at this point, my Rubo bench is for all intents and purposes finished. Um, I'm still working on the leg vise and the sliding vise, but the bench itself is done. And I've got a lot of video showing uh, the, the cutting of the mortises and the joinery and the setting of the top onto the legs and the flattening of the top and all that stuff. So there'll be plenty of Rubo to be uh, shown, and I'll certainly be finishing up the Rubo project, uh, certainly this calendar year, as far as the podcasts go, so that we can move beyond that. I also built a chest of drawers for a customer, and I filmed I filmed some of it. I admit I didn't film the whole thing because, frankly, I was on a deadline, and it is just it's impossible to get anything done and film the whole thing. It takes about three times longer to do that. So I skipped over a lot of parts, but they're parts that are really, I don't want to say basic, but kind of mundane. You know, I'll show you how I do one piece of joiner and I'll skip over everything else. Um, I did skip over a lot of the finishing because it was just too hard. And, and frankly, I didn't want to have my camera out because I was spraying on a finish and I was worried about getting finish on the lens itself. So um, finishing up the Rubo, this chest of drawers, and of course, lots of woodworking in America coverage. The Hand Tools and Techniques Conference is new and improved this year in Valley Forge. I've got um, uh, plenty of plans for the coverage I want to do there. I'll be showing some live videos from the conference. I'll definitely be keeping up with my live audio boo coverage and of course taking lots of notes to produce full episodes after the conference with my thoughts and kind of editorial review of each session. Personally, I'm really looking forward to Adam Carabini's uh, joinery planes, really looking forward to Chuck Bender's inlay and stringing seminar. And of course, Woodworking America would not be complete without Roy Underhill and his keynote speech. And certainly it looks like he's got a good dovetailing class. And this is called Dovetails the Details. 
Um, the last thing that I'm really excited about is the molding uh, molding planes uses in a setup seminar that's going on there. I know very little about molding planes and I'm hoping to learn a lot about it. So in the theme of lathe projects coming up and lathe season coming, I figured I'd take you down to the shop, show a short video clip of my review on the new Colt parabolic pin drilling bits. These things are impressive. So come on down to the shop and I'll see what we can see. Hey everybody, just a real quick video. Um, all of you have seen me here at the drill press before, drilling at pin blanks and such. And um, you've seen, you know, you've got to go slow, you've got to back it out, make sure you're clearing chips, make sure you don't overheat it. Um, and acrylic has always been the real bane of my existence because it is so hard and you've got to go real slow and it can't explode if you overheat it too much. Well, I went and I got one of these famed Colt um, parabolic flute design pin drilling blanks and uh, you've got to check this out. Okay I've got the blank mounted up in here the drill bit or the drill press is set at 1700 rpms and um, I'm gonna leave the dust collection off so you can see around the hose and uh, check this out. Done. That's it. Unbelievable. And check this out. No tear out. No tear out on the bottom of that hole whatsoever.